Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction thriller film, The Blackout. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Thanks to technological advancements, people in the future live a convenient and comfortable lifestyle. Suddenly one day, the world is plunged into darkness. Lights are out and a plane drops down like a dead bird. All sorts of communications are down. The whole planet suffers from a blackout, except for a small area near Moscow and Russia where the electricity is still on. Oleg, a serviceman, happens to be on vacation in the light area. He tries to call his family after he finds out about the blackout from the news on TV, but no phone signals can be reached. The light area is isolated by the darkness, spreading worldwide. To figure out what is going on, the government establishes a defensive perimeter quickly and sends out reconnaissance groups as well as drones to investigate the dark area. Everyone living in the dark area is dead and their bodies scatter all over the place. Oleg is ordered to check in a newly built base called Outpost, the only effective defense that humans have right now. During a meeting, a leader introduces that the dark area is far more dangerous than people could even imagine. Five teams of soldiers have been sent inside the dark area, but none of them comes back from it. However, a corpse is brought back from the dark area by a team that only reaches the edge of the danger zone. The autopsy states that the person is killed by a virus that inhabits inside the person. It seems like all people in the dark area are killed for the same reason. It sounds bizarre and hard to believe, but this is the only explanation that seems logical. On that night, a large number of unknown creatures are flocking towards the base from the forest three kilometers away. Radar shows that the unknown attacker group is massive. They are bigger than human and they are moving very fast. Tons of soldiers take up positions and form a defense line at the edge of the dark area waiting to fight. Shadows flash past and gunshots light the night. The next morning, a soldier wakes up only to find a dead brown bear is on top of him. On the way to the medic, he sees dead soldiers all over the place and hills of dead brown bears appear outside the army's defense barrier. The army can't figure out why the bears become savage and what makes them attack the base. While the army is dying to know the reasons, an alien with the mouth and his smelly nose, who prefers to be called Running Nose, shows up with answers. It turns out, 200,000 years ago, after the alien's original planet ran out of resources, they created humans based on their appearance and bred humans on Earth in order to cultivate Earth to be more suitable for aliens as their replacement planet. The alien creators have superpowers, but the humans are created inferior to them. But it's unclear why humans are created much more good-looking than the aliens themselves. After all the developments humans made in the past years, the young planet Earth is finally habitable for the aliens, and now they are coming to take over the planet. Therefore, humans on Earth must die to make space for the alien immigrants that will arrive tomorrow in a giant migration spaceship. Humans are supposed to be purged in three steps. First is to activate the blackout to cut all communications throughout the world. Second, initiate a self-destruction program planted inside humans' body, which explains why the interior virus can terminate tons of people in the dark area. However, in the course, a small system bug occurs that allows electricity to remain in this small light area where no people can be self-destructed. But there is an alien puppeteer with a mind-controlling superpower who can fix this bug by manipulating people's thoughts. He's going to dominate 160 million dead people from the dark area, turning them into his puppet army to fight against those survivors in the light area, which is also called the third step. The savage bears are like the foreplay before the real thing. To win this battle, the remaining human beings have to kill the puppeteer before he launches the attack. The reason why Running Nose is willing to assist humans in fighting against his own race is because he sees himself as a human's god that wants to keep his creations alive, as well as to lead them to a brand new civilization. He knows that the puppeteer is hiding on Earth, but he doesn't know where exactly. A survived soldier coming back from the quarantine zone has somehow gained a psychic ability that can allow him to create a psychic link with the puppeteer. The psychic soldier is the other reason why Running Nose wants to help humans. Later, many trucks of fighters accompanied by Oleg and Running Nose are sent out to kill the puppeteer. After the psychic soldier locates his position with Running Nose's help, the psychic soldier stays at the base due to his leg injury. At the same time, the puppeteer sees the human's plan via the psychic soldier's mind, so he orders his zombified army to attack the outpost base immediately. Human soldiers are in a fatal war with a large number of enemies. Soon the sky is lightened by different flare bombs from the human side. The purple ones are used to show the need for backup, while the red ones mean the emergency. 
Situations back at the base are not positive either. The puppeteer launches tons of missiles at the base, although many of them are shot down by the human defense system. Unfortunately, one missile hits through and destroys the base. The psychic soldier gets killed when the base is all blown up. Running Nose, Oleg, and the formed up team are the last hope of human beings. The team arrive in the dark area the next morning, but is stopped by a crowd of people under the control of the puppeteer. At first, the team hesitate to hurt them because they look like normal people outside. Inside, however, they follow no independent thoughts but the puppeteer's order. A brutal fight between them starts again on the street, causing massive destruction and many people losing their lives. Fighting through the puppet army, the team makes it to a skyscraper where the puppeteer is supposed to be hiding on the roof. Running Nose, Oleg, and a few others go to fight the puppeteer, leaving the rest of the team to secure the entrance from more waves of attacks. During the battle, a team member fails to stop a truck from the puppeteer's army before the truck crashes into the entrance of the building. Oil barrels at the back of the truck are lit, and the explosion kills all soldiers guarding at the bottom of the building, causing the Walking Dead-like army to swarm inside. While on the top of the building, Running Nose locates the puppeteer, who bears almost the same look. After a fast and furious fight, Running Nose knocks him down. Oleg helps to destroy a device in the puppeteer's chest. A soldier thrusts a grenade into the puppeteer's chest and burns him to death. Because of that, Running Nose takes control of his puppet army and purges them all. All of a sudden, everyone in the puppeteer's army falls lifeless on the ground. Later, the survivors of the team find out that Running Nose has the ability to save all the human beings from getting killed by the self-destruction program. But obviously he doesn't do that, because he thinks it's not worth saving those people. Also, he believes that with a small number of humans and his superpower, a new world can be created anyway. In anger at losing loved ones, and Running Nose's lack of respect for human lives, Olive determines to kill Running Nose. The remaining members of the team fight with Running Nose, but he can create many identical incarnations to avoid the attacks. During the chaos, one man figures out the real Running Nose and throws him from the roof down to the ground, ending his running life. Upon Running Nose's death, the alien's migration spaceship descends from the sky and lands next to a skyscraper. Ola goes inside the ship with the other survived soldiers. Then they are astonished to find countless sleeping pods inside. Olin believes that these aliens will continue to wipe out the whole human race after they wake up. Therefore, the soldiers open fire at the pods, killing as many aliens as they can before the capsule timers reach zero. Despite that, there are too many left intact. In order to speed up the pace, they decide to break the pipes used for oxygen supply. And momentarily, the sleeping capsules are ruined sections by sections. So are the numerous aliens sleeping inside. As a result, the spaceship and the ruined city are flooded with their green-colored blood. However, when it comes to the last pipe, the soldiers are shocked to discover there are still some alive alien children there. A woman in the team cannot kill the kids, and she stops others from killing them too. Numerous alien children wake up and crawl out of their capsules. The soldiers decide to show them some human mercy, so they drop their weapons on the floor. All alien children crowd together, staring in confusion at the three human soldiers. In the end, neither the alien children nor the human soldiers know what fate they will encounter on this planet. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.